one. Okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to the the outpost side, I guess, of Blood Eagle. Um, we have a array of six people. All right. I guess we'll just do quick introductions here since we didn't do them at the start. So we'll start with Kale. I'm playing Erdogan Sale, a force sensitive archaeologist. And Dan. I'm playing uh, Aiden San. He's a Corellian Fringer pilot. And Jack. I'm playing Macron Duvel, exiled nobility, who is currently dealing with the fact that his sister is taunting him in his mind. And James. Playing Joke and Ben, human pilot, rebel liaison, uh, blaster master. And Katie. I'll be playing Nena. She's a Zeltron uh, performer who is, uh, you know, relatively new to becoming an agent. All right, and Kyle. I'm playing Rio the Jawa, where he's a, a technician with a predilection towards explosives. All right, sounds good. And you guys have just uh, witnessed a very sudden and shocking display. And Gristle is still currently in what appears to be shock, just kneeling over the covered body of his yeah. friend. Nana would try to touch his shoulder, give him some sort of comfort. He doesn't seem to respond in any, in any meaningful way. Uh, instead, he just kind of keeps his hand close to his mouth and just sort of stares off into the corner, almost like he's trying to work something out in his head. And like he said, he feels like he should know what to do here, but he just has no idea. But as far as you all know, the base is, well, relatively intact, aside from a lot of the structural damage, but there might be some things still left inside or around the base, and as far as you know, Renzi's still out somewhere on the planet, but where exactly is uh, uncertain. Uh, for the brief moment, Magrin will actually go over to Erdo and ask, how, what is the typical ceremony of disposing of bodies in the Jedi culture. Jedi usually uh, cremate. Perhaps maybe not right now, but when this is over, we should do that to them. If only to give closure. It would be fitting. Uh, with that nod, Macron will then approach Gristle, and s he he are, he said out loud that Volva told him when this came he would know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, then Macron will say, even if you don't have the thought in your mind, Volva must have trusted your instinct, your intuition, when this moment came. Maybe you shouldn't think about it. You should just do something. Well, it seems a lot easier said you? than done. What, what does your gut tell you, Gristle? It tells me to to look around. I don't know. He said it would be clear. Not just that I would know what to do, but it would be very clear. Then let's start looking, and maybe it, it will become clear. Yes. At the very least, we have to do something. We can't just stay here. Oh, that's a good sentiment. Uh, uh, Rio doesn't know Gristle very well, say. Uh, if he was like Hank, he would have wanted you to help the living, not seek vengeance on the, for the dead. Well, that's why we're staying here, isn't it? Well, Erdo did get a lead on... on uh, Renzi. Maybe we should head that direction. Uh, do you have a general idea, Erdo? No. Maybe she left us a trail. Let's see what we can find. Maybe maybe head to the the security room after all and see if we can find any camera footage of anything or that's where Jokin wants to start as well. He also has some interest in the the kind of intelligence uh, that could be lost or compromised by this attack. At the very least it could lead us to something else. That's a good thought. All right. So you guys want to head to the security room, basically? 
That seems to be our best bet. It'll be yeah. something that's raised up kind of like this, where it's near one of the large dishes, because this was a listening post, so, you know, picking up transmissions and things like that, things they're not supposed to be hearing. So there may still be th some things left over, but um, as you guys start heading out, uh, Crystal doesn't move at all. He just stays where he is. What's wrong, Crystal? I... I think I should just wait and see. Will it do you any good waiting here? I don't know, but I trust what he said, and if what he said is correct, it'll come to me eventually. There's no point in just sitting here waiting for something to happen. We need to act. Even if it may be the wrong choice, I think it's better than just sitting here lamenting their fate. Even making the wrong choice is better than no choice at all. All right. So it'll be any social check you can use to try to get him to uh, to move, basically. Oh, he's like the master of that too, isn't he? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking coercion, especially when it's especially since the angle we seem to go to right here is don't have a pity party, get up and let's go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Before you guys start working on that, Erdo's gonna try and gonna try and uh, appeal to his better nature. Um, he'll he'll just say, Gristle, I think that you'll find whatever Master Mon meant you to find wherever you go. Uh, and it's just not safe here. If you stay, then we'll have to stay too. And Brensi Tosh is out there and. She's probably in danger and probably needs your help. All right. Did you want to make a check with that, or is that more of just like an assistance? I mean, I'll, I'll make the check if, if no one else wants to help with a charm, but I, I want to try and do something other than uh, bully Gristle into getting a move on. Well, okay. I just... It's Macron figures that Gristle is more susceptible to that than something where he seems to call upon maybe Volda's teachings. Mechanics-wise, I wanted to try his discipline rather than his cool, but <laughs> if you definitely want to do charm, Akron will help you out there. It's just he doesn't know if appealing to Gristle's vote of nature is actually what's going to get him up and going again. Also, if you're looking at it mechanically, his uh, cool and discipline are actually really close, so... Just letting you know on that front, if that's influencing anything. But yeah, um, sounds like Erda wants to try the charm, so last call for anyone wanting to assist with that. Yeah, Macron will assist. Then, then I can assist too, but oh, okay. Okay. But I can I, either give you three ranks or four presents. Difficulty will be his cool, because it's charm and cool, um, which is three red, one purple. And I'll flip it for four red. Uh, no, no, nobody's fool on Gristle, really. No, none of it. Not in any of his trees. So, so no Zebo going on here with like nine red. No, <laughs> Zebo only has seven ranks, but he has no ranks in discipline, so it could be a lot worse. <laughs> Thanks to the Goodness. Oh yeah. You might be right. I, I guess it doesn't do me any good to dwell. I could probably jog my memory or find some inspiration in something. Uh, let's just go. I'll, I'll keep my eyes out. And like we mentioned earlier, we can come back here at the end and give them a proper send-off. Should we move the bodies at least onto the sun flare for the moment? prevent any of the creepy crawlies from finding them? Sounds like a solid idea. Token will then, I guess, move them into what passes for sort of a cooler, or a room that can be made cool. You know, you probably could have... And 
<laughs> Depends on how much you want to say how, how much of Balkan's little lab is left over because he probably has a cold storage thing in there. Yeah, I figured between like food and science, we have a cold storage or a room. You gonna put them in the freezer? <laughs> or oh, a room they've been made sufficiently cold through the ship's, you know, engine system. Right next to the bantha meat, you know. Well, we don't, we don't. It's like we don't want them to rot any further before we can finally get them cremated, which I think is our ultimate goal. We'd also want to protect them from the copious amounts of wild animals running around. I'd say. Yeah, oh yeah, we probably it. also don't want to bait wild animals to come clawing at the sun flare. Well, they're inside the ship, though, and locked in. Yeah, but if they catch the smell... I'm not so worried about wild animals attacking an Armor 5 starship. And you've never seen fear mocks. I'm willing to risk it in this situation. Alright, either way, yeah, you can move them onto the sun flare just fine. Just a little careful timing. And a group effort, of course. A little unwieldy to carry a person by yourself. Especially one that has been pretty much bored. Alright, so we have moved them, and uh, I think it's time for us to begin our trek into the facility proper. Yep, with the schematics you guys have, you know that um, the security room is near like the uh, communication center where they monitor things from that main dish, which is kind of right near the entrance, so... If everything is, is intact as it seems, or as it should be, then you should be able to make your way up there in almost no time. And indeed you do, if you feel like it, which I'm sure you do. So. That's what we're heading first, right? Yep. Make sure we're not compromised any data, as Joking was saying. Yep. Plus it's probably our best lead to find out what's been going on inside the facility. Yeah, and as you proceed through... Um, the hallways are mostly short and usually kind of cramped in some places, but um, in some of these side halls, there really isn't a whole lot of damage. It's more in through that main line, through the entrance, and then that main atrium is where a lot of the wreckage is. And here you do see a lot of like signs of struggle, some scuffs, even some like uh, scoring on the walls, but nothing too significant, nothing like a broken pillars or anything like that that you might find in the middle. Uh, and it's up for lightsaber marks. Yeah, you don't. He doesn't see any at this point. Um, it looks mostly most of the damage or any signs of damage is through like blasters and things like that. I assume we also see um, bodies as well from all those fighting, or uh, actually, no, you don't see any bodies around. Hmm. Okay. Not even bones or any. No? Well, I don't think we've reduced to bones in, you know, four days. Well, I'm not saying they decomposed. I'm saying yeah. someone ate them. Hmm. Alright. This is quite unsettling. Some, but, um, there was definitely a fight here, and the bodies have either... They never fell, or they were moved. Yeah, I really would like to look around for, you know, kind of trails, blood trails, or even just obvious, uh, what is it, drag marks through, like, the dirt or something. Not that okay. there's dirt, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it'll just be an average perception for anyone who wants to look for that kind of stuff. I can lend you four ranks in perception if you'd like. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. I, uh, I forgot my boost for having joking around. That's what? That's two two boosts. <laughs> I think that's all uh, 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 Well, the... Uh, that's only when Jogan's in a ship. Oh, okay. Yeah, regardless, um, Vero and Macron do find that there are there is signs of blood, some of which has been cleaned, and definitely some bodies have been moved around in some of the areas, especially around the corners of the hall. Uh, we can only hope that it was the defenders that lived cleaning up after this attack. But wherever, you, wherever you find the trails, um, they usually lead to some kind of door out or out the front door, and then there's no sign of where they went from there. Oh, wild animals. Oh, that is not good if it was, news. If it was the, f the defenders that lived and, and cleaned this up, there would be... They would still have a presence here that we know that we knew about. And they would have tried to call. Yeah, th this... It doesn't mean that they, they didn't try and clean up. Obviously something else. is. It's been a few days since this happened from the looks of it. I mean... Would Erda be able to investigate the blood and stuff and figure out how long ago, more precisely than that, 
this happens? Yeah, you could try that. It would be at a that, hard medicine. At that same time, I want to try and radio the other team to tell them that there are definitely signs of battle in the base, but it appears any bodies that remained were dragged out into the jungle. Okay. I'll let them know that. Um, so yeah, uh, investigating the bloodstains would be a hard medicine, and remember that because you have Grizzle's card, his passive will give you an upgrade on any medicine check. So that is something you can take into account. Yep, it looks like most of the bloodstains, well, all of them date back to around the same time that you can find, and it was most. It was probably about two, maybe three days ago. Now, is his card technically already in play, or will we be putting him in play now? Um, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Uh, well, we'll say he can get a boost potentially. So. Yeah, we'll say okay. We'll say with with the. Yeah, we'll say since you did the the check to like bring him out of that, he technically entered. So you'll you'll all get a boost on whatever your next check is that you do. But um, yeah. So that's what you find about the bloodstains, and just up the stairs is the the comm room, which looks mostly bare as far as damage and commotion. Um, aside from just some consoles that have been switched off and some of the powers been cut on on a few of them, but there are there are some that are still active. Well, let's go check those out. Yeah, let's let's let's, let's mechanic and computers this stuff there, joking. You got it. Yeah, so, what kind of things are you looking for? Um, any well, I guess the first thing would be any like footage of what happened. Okay. Um, so, the instant any of you like touches the security thing, you can tell that this has been gone through. There's still some stuff in there, but it's definitely been pared down, tampered with, and whatever's left is corrupted and will probably have to be um, put back together, basically. Radio is all on that. Yeah, to do that, it'll just be, um, say, average computers. I'll upgrade it once. Sounds good. Always use one. Well, just remember, I'll roll here. Let me see my. I guess. He doesn't have any cool talents for that. Oh, I, I'd yeah, say it worked. You had the boost from Gristle, too, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I see the roll. What was the result? Uh, Three success and advantage and two triumphs. Oh, wow. Make that one Four more success, success for uh, the, the addition of the Gristle helping out, right? That's what someone said? Yeah. Yeah, you get one boost, yeah. But, um. Yeah, so with all that, Rio looks through the security footage and does find some things. Um, the only piece that he's able to really put back together is a feed from a camera that looks like it's barely staying on from the atrium. Um, the date of the feed is about two to three days ago, which is kind of matches up with what you got from the bloodstains. Um, and you can't see a whole lot, but what you hear is Renzi yelling out, sure and stop, and that's about it. Well, that doesn't bode well. But it's hardly incriminating. Well. Actually, with the two trying. Yeah, give, give you cut out there, Ben. Oh, my hangouts. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's <laughs> two of me now. Um, well, not anymore. Okay. So you did actually and then cut out what happened after that? Yeah, actually, with the second triumph, um, there is actually something else that Rio can put together. Um, it's another piece of footage from the same camera, but a little while before that. And you can see Shorin kind of like barely in the frame, standing around the center of the room um, with both of his hands up, and then just some like shafts of dust start flying down and a few girders like hit the floor and... There's like a shaking in the camera to the point where the image basically just fuzzes out. There's so much vibration in it. And then it stops and you see a bunch of rubble all over the floor. Hands up like using the force to pull the ceiling down or hands up like, I surrender? Uh, like the former. Hmm. But we don't see who he was collapsing it on, just that he brought it down. Yeah, you can barely see him in the shot. Hmm. That explains the roof, then, I guess. I mean, we kind of figured, but... <laughs> Confirmation is always nice. Yes. 
Could we then attempt to try to figure out what sort of data has been stolen or anything like that? Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Um, well, just based on what Rio's been looking through, it looks like everything but those pieces are... There was pretty much a command that was sent out to pretty much just waste all of the security footage. And it's just that those were pretty much on the last... Uh, basically the top of the stack, and he was able to put those back together from the pieces, essentially. And the rest Got of it, it is scrap. The system here is just security footage. It's not like intelligence from the listening post or anything? Uh, right here, yeah, but um, there is a communications room next door that you could go to, and that's responsible for the monitors from the dish and things like that. Yeah, that would be Jokin's next area of interest, I think. It's Rocket. Okay. So you head in there. It's kind of, it's a little further up on this tower here. Um, as you come up here, there's actually a window that looks out over that little valley between the two bases, and you see a group of about four to five huge red avian creatures perched on the top of the, uh, the opposite, opposite side of the base, kind of just chattering at each other, and it looks like there's some more, like, bloodstains on, like, the, uh, the lip that they're all perched on. I think they might have been eating something. Oh, those are those blood eagles. And for reference, they're each about the size of a starfighter, like an X-Wing. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're pretty huge. Well, it'll be really easy to hit them, guys. We're going to need a bigger boat. Really easy to hit them, but Lord knows how much damage that'll end up doing. That's a good point. Let, let's leave them alone for now. I mean, if they're not bothering yeah, they're us. Let's not, let's not bother them. Yeah, they're quite a ways away, and they don't, like, that doesn't seem like they've noticed you through the window. They're just kind of hanging out, eating whatever they're eating there. But, um, the communications room is basically in the same state where it looks like some of the power's been cut, but the main line to the dish itself is actually still on, even though the dish was probably, it looks like from the, the feed that's coming in, the dish itself was probably, um, hit from on a hardware level. It looks like they probably, um, disabled it from its little antenna thing. Or someone did. Okay. But there's still some stuff on the computers here. Um, let's say to recover stuff, it'll be uh, hard computers upgraded once. Definitely. And okay. I will. I will have Erdogan help me this time. There you go. Yeah. And yeah, I don't. I don't have any special computers. Should I, should I, think, should I flip back as we think? It would give me five yellows. Yeah, we have a lot of destiny. Either way, I think you've got a good shot at it, but there's no harm in making a service. Yep, no harm at all. Actually, yeah. it, it was blank, but hey, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> <laughs> so what you can find from this is that um, it looks like the data that they've been scraping, basically, from Imperial feeds, all of that is gone. Um, there's nothing that, it, that seems to be left on the system here. It looks like there was... Uh, Someone had downloaded it, downloaded it actually about two to three days ago. So, but nothing's left on the system here. However, um, you do find records of emergency beacons activating actually up until like today. So, like things that you would put on like a person. Emergency uh, beacons for like a rebel frequency, or yeah. is this okay? So, like a distress beacon that someone might have on themselves. Um, yeah. Rio can actually. Oh, go for it, sorry. Yeah, yeah. With, a, with an average computer check, Rio can get away to detect that signal on his data pad if he wants. All right, let's, let's do that. I'll, I'll, I'll so take... That. That's good. I'll take help, and I'll just take the boost from Gussel. Oh, did I get a boost uh, from Gussel? It was, it was just on one check. Okay, good. Well, let's see. There we go. Yep, so Rio, Rio um, gets the tracking signal for it, but it looks like, based on the way it's set out, it's pretty intermittent, so it's not that he'll be able to, like, radar find something, but the next time it pings, he'll know where it came from. All right, I'd like to send the data to the other team as well, just in case they're nearby anybody, if I can okay. do that. Yeah. And just just to make sure, we, we divined that most of the battle, at least the blood spill, that happened two to three days ago. Yep. Okay, so it looks... It, it's probably plausible that this was actually this was either downloaded by whoever attacked the base, 
or it was downloaded and then wiped clean by the rebels in order to make sure it didn't fall into enemy hands. Um, my question is this. This happened two or three days ago. Why haven't they left yet? Maybe they, they could have some... Whoever it was that instigated this. We haven't seen any ships. Yeah, I mean, you'd think they would have left well, planet they... and Sharon's still here, so... Or... It's a well, Shorn sure may like not us. have been part of their plans if they were separate. Mm -hmm. If it was a separate attack. And if it wasn't, they may not have had a ship until now. Mm. Which means... Mm, I would really think there would have been a few ships at least, just, you know, rebel ships that were here that could have... You know, that they could have stolen or whatever. But. Well, they were holding high-class Imperial prisoners. They may not have wanted to take the chance. It's true. I think this would have been the kind of place where you leave any... Associated ships like in orbit or something, and only land when required. So, with these these two or three days worth of pings, can Erdo assemble them to create a route or a map? Um. Hmm. Well, wouldn't they have to come in first? Basically, we have to get we have to get the next ping first. Uh, basically, yeah. To know the most up-to-date information, you'd have to wait. But, but I, I'm not looking for up-to-date yeah. information. I'm trying to create like a, a map of where whoever has been putting out these emergency beacons might have been, and then try and anticipate with any record we have of the geography where they might be going. Mm -hmm. So you can actually do this pretty easily now that you have everything. But um, okay, it looks like that it looks that um, at that period, basically up to the two two to three days ago, all of the pings are still inside the base, so business as usual, it looks like. But since then, they've been sort of steadily leading outside until about a day ago, where they just kind of stop a short distance outside the base. R roughly all the same place, or...? Would we be able to yeah. tell if that was yeah. outside the broadcasting range? Like it's mm. Or is it more of a, it stopped and we don't know why? Or, you know, there's no reason. Yeah, it's more that you're not sure why it stopped, but all of the pings that you see kind of go to this one point outside the base and just stop there. Sounds like we have our next destination, folks. Yep, yeah, sounds, sounds like we should investigate there. Is there anything else we wanted to do at the base before we went there? I don't think so, right? I was hoping to perhaps get more information about Mav Pelion, but mm, it looks like if you... That might be hard to do with the base in the state it's in. And perhaps. everything's been deleted on the consoles. Yes. Would we perhaps know just from schematics where the brig is? Yeah, yeah. You know you know where pretty much everything is in this facility as far as official schematics go. Yeah, I was going to say we can go and see if we can exa just examine the, uh, the holding cells. Yes. Yeah. If only to see if either they're still in there for some reason, or if something broke out. Someone. That is an interesting idea. All right, we'll swing by there and then head towards the beacons. Or maybe it would make sense. Could it, Erdo has um, sense, right? Maybe we should just try a sense and see if there's any. Like, if we can just right now feel anyone else in the base. And, oh, yeah. So what range can you get to with that? Extreme. Oh, wow. Um, there's a lot of life, like like you might expect, but most of it's small. Um, with that range, you can sense the Blood Eagles above, perched on the base. Some of them actually left by now, taken back off. Um, but as far as, like, humanoid-sized, uh, there isn't anything. Oh. And we know that the, that encompasses the the entire outpost, or at least the holding cells. Yeah. Okay. It, it encompasses nearly the whole outpost. Yeah, either they got out, or they have been killed in their cells. If they're dead, I would still like to find out. Yeah, it's, know, it's still worth checking, I think. Do we know who else is being held here besides um, basically Shorin? And Mav. And, and Mav, yeah. Other than them, um, actually, it looks like they don't hold too many prisoners here. They're mostly just holding them for, I mean, whatever reason they might have done that, but they seem to be exceptions. Secrecy, I think, right? 
Most yeah, for the most part. Right, okay, because this is primarily a listening station, not a... Okay, yep, that makes sense. Um, huh. Okay, we'll just handle this in order then. Um, so you, everyone, so we have some people heading down the holding cells? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, in the background. Yep. Aiden will go with. So that's in, like, the sub-level of the main part of the base that you're in now. Uh, on the way there, you do see some, you know, small, like, lizard creatures and things like that crawling on the floor. Looks like they've probably gotten in now, the now that the base is open. They're mostly just scrounging for whatever they can find. Um, but you head down the stairwell, down into the brig, and it's pretty, uh, pretty grim down here, but not really... No overt signs of violence, at least any more than is in the rest of the base. Um, Still no bodies, right? Actually, in here, if you like walk the sign of the line of cells, there's not too many. There's only about maybe five on each side of like a single hallway. On the side of one, it looks like there is actually a a body of what looks like a rebel officer who's locked in one of the cells. Has he also been blood eagled? No, he's just been. Looks like he has some um, stab wounds on his chest. Hmm. Can we? Is there anything that would identify him? Um, you look for like a name or just like a rank? Uh, like a dog tag, basically. Uh, it looks like there's something on him, like around his neck, but you can't see it from where you are. He's in the cell, and the cell door is closed. Rio will pick the lock. Is is if Rio very skull Douglas? Uh, well, he has a couple ranks, yeah. Okay. Are you more Skullduggers than me? No. Not if, you just wanna, <laughs> if you just want to Skullduggery it, then yeah, it'll be a uh, it'll be a daunting Skullduggery upgraded once. Ooh, daunting. Anyone have a But if you feel that, cunning? you can still try. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spend too much time. All right. Could I'll you also not try to maybe mechanics it instead of Skullduggery it? That's an option. Well, you know, uh, okay, let's do mechanics. That is the better thing. It'll be the same check. All right. Cool. Well, that's four yellow instead of two green and a yellow. Alright, <laughs> I'll assume someone's going to give me some unskilled assistance. Macron will. And if, Well, actually, I can get skilled assistance from Erdo, since we're using mechanics. He's not coming with us. Oh, he didn't come with us? See? No, he he's going stuff. to the med med medical bay this time. Alright, well then, uh, here we go. Yeah, let's <laughs> oh, wow. get it open. <laughs> so Rio spends a little time. He manages to, manages to uh, dismantle the mechanism on the door. And Turns out it falls right off. <laughs> but yeah, with the help of Macron and the other people down there, they're able to pull the pull it off and push the door aside. Maybe the double triumph is this is rubble officer. Maybe maybe he's not quite dead. Maybe we can save him. I know it's not very likely, but I mean that seems. Like uh, I have I have the double triumph covered. Oh okay, I'll let you handle it. You know more than I do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> be good. Trust me. Um, but you go in and it looks like you you don't recognize this guy. His head was kind of down. He's a human. Um, a little bit older. Looks like his rank is uh, around lieutenant. Um, like I said, he has some stab wounds on his chest, and you can see the blood kind of just soaked the front of his jacket and is now done his arm arms. But uh, if you well, do you want to like search him or anything? Or yes, real being the pragmatist, will search the dead body. Well, Macron was yeah, Macron's interested enough to do it. Yeah, actually, as you as you search him down, tucked in like it's kind of behind the blood stain area, tucked into his jacket, you see, you find a uh, what looks like a sort of a data stick, I guess. It's his hollow tags. <laughs> Not all that too, but you also find like what looks like some kind of data receptacle that's been tucked in like an inside pocket of his jacket. He was hiding it from his captors. Uh, yeah, that's that's um. Macron plug it in and see what it is. Yeah, Macron will produce his data pad and see if he can't pull out the data, or at least this, see if the data is available. Yeah, actually, when you when you put it in, um, actually no, there is some minor encryption, so it'll be a hard computer's check to get through it. I, I can help. Macron, you, Macron, yeah, no, no, Macron just sighs and hands you the data pad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is not his forte. You'll help me out, right? So. Uh... Yeah, of course. Like yeah. I can, I can Thanks. point at things that are. Are you willing to triumph on every one of your rolls? <laughs> no, no, I actually don't have triumphs. Even the comstock didn't have triumphs, but he's getting lucky. 
<laughs> well, it's okay, because as Rio cracks through this encryption, he finds that this is all that missing com data that was downloaded. Oh! No. It looks oh. like all of the stuff that's been most recent since their last um, like report to the Alliance. So this is the stuff that they haven't even sent to the Alliance yet. Uh, is Jokin with us, or did he go with Erdo? No, I'm with you. I'm gonna as soon as anyone mentions that, Jokin will. Uh, yes, I will hand it over to Lieutenant Jokin. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Hold on. Now I, I'm not against giving it, of course, to the rebel liaison, but I at least want to see what was so important. What 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 does the data reveal? Um, to you, not a whole lot. It looks like mostly like since they used the the dish to basically piggyback on Imperial combos and things like that, just picking up stuff. A lot of it's like troop movements and um, patrol schedules and things like that, like where they're allocating different ships to guard certain systems, that kind of thing. Pretty useful stuff if you're waging a war. Um, yeah, basically just movements and allocations, uh, logistic stuff mostly. All right, very well. I'll, I'll eject the data stick from my uh, data pad. A lot of data stuff here, I just realized, and give it to Jokin. Uh, the, what about the dog tags? I want to at least inspect those for a minute. At least find out who the heck who the heck this poor schmuck was. Okay. Um, the dog tags. It's not someone you recognize. First off, it's just uh, I don't know. Random name, number three. Uh, let's <laughs> Lieutenant Random. You you can you can tell oh. he was prepared for for this line of questioning. No no no, it's okay. <laughs> well, actually, hmm. Trying to think if there's any good rebels here, but uh, no, it's fine. Yeah, we'll call him the uh, Lieutenant uh, Morin. I don't know about that. Let's go with that one. <laughs> That's his name. Second Lieutenant. Akron will gently wrap the dog tag in the chain as well. All right. Well, be best equipped for that. Yeah. All right. Well. All right. Uh, while they're mulling over this stuff, uh, Aiden will actually look over at the other cells. Is there anything in any of the other ones? Uh, no, they all appear pretty much empty. Um, Do any of them look like destroyed or anything, or you know, like? Broken down, like it was, you know. Did it, basically, did Shorn break out, or was this while he was not in his cell that this happened? Oh, it looks like none of the doors have been like broken in or anything. Actually, they're all still intact, uh, other than the one you guys just dismantled. But yeah. yeah, okay, nothing out of the ordinary. Otherwise, not really. Okay. All right. Then I should we meet with Erdo somewhere, or just head over to the medical bay to head up to meet up with him. Yeah, so we'll discover that now then. So as you guys were doing that, Erdo was going to the medical bay where um uh it looks like if a battle happened here, it probably didn't last long enough that there was any kind of triage going on in this place. There isn't any sign of you know, like battle wounds being treated. It's pretty much empty. Aside from a few things that have been knocked around. Yeah, Ergo was just going to gather up, or mostly planning on gathering up some extra supplies in case there were, um, or presuming that the survivors will be wounded when we get to them. Yeah. You can find, um, there's still a stash of Stimpaks left. It looks like some of it was actually taken. Uh, one of the cabinets is still open, but there's still some left in there. We'll say about five Stimpaks worth. And the rest of you were going out to meet him. I guess you can find him about now. In the medical bay. It looks like there's still an active console in here. Or at least one that doesn't look destroyed. Oh, oh hey. Rio will go up to it immediately. Fortunately for Rio, this one doesn't look like it needs much cracking after it's powered on. Alright, good. Um, so I guess I want, I want to look at medical records for the prisoners. Oh. I'm assuming they, yeah. they, they share the, uh, the med bay with them. Yeah, um, it looks like, for the most part, nothing too out of the ordinary. Shorn really hasn't, or Shorn or Mev, really haven't been um, brought in for any outstanding injuries in a long time. 
at least since the uh, they were brought here, which was about I think what like seven months ago at this point. Um, I'm yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. Well then, uh, anything else you guys think we should look through in this medical area with or for <laughs> medical terminal for? No, but Erdo would like to go to um, Hank Lamont's quarters. Hmm. Oh, would, th would this medical terminal have records of all the people on the base by chance? If so, Rio would download that so we can kind of, kind of see who we can find. You know, We're, use it as a casualty list. Of all the spells. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. All right. So no business left in the medical bay. Well, I'm assuming they didn't post anything in here about what happened horrible, what <laughs> went horribly went wrong. You know. No, it looks like. Um... As far as records go, there aren't just medical records. Um, the, the only other thing you find is what looks like a, a recording, or more like a transcript of a, a visit between the, the local doctor, basically, and one of the staff on the base who was complaining about his emergency beacon pinging without him, like, activating it. Oh, you know what? what I would like to... I would... Hmm... I'd like to watch it for further detail. I mean, does he give any specifics? Is he kind of... Is this... Does this kind of... If he's going to the medical doctors, I mean, like they're installed inside them as like some kind of weird cybernetic or... Yeah, it's a chip that's implanted in their in their bodies. Yeah. Oh, good. Under their skin. It's, well, yeah, under their skin, obviously. Oh, can I activate all of them from here, by chance? Uh, no. They're automated. Um, but it was about five days ago that he experienced that. Five days ago. All right. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll keep that in mind. Oh, and I'm guessing these things shut off when the people are dead. Is that, um, can I ascertain that from the information I've gained from the medical? <laughs> and if not, I'd like to uh, do a knowledge check to see if I might know that. Yeah, we'll do that as a knowledge check. Um, let's call it education, oh, since that's kind of a. Uh, all right, let me... Uh, Technology thing. Um, we'll I'll say it's hard. Good it ones. All right. Anyone have any ranks in education? All right. I'll roll... I'll take... I'll take... I'll take it. Better than I have. Okay. Aiden is decidedly uneducated, so... Okay. And you said it was hard upgrade at once? <laughs> yep. All right, let's see what... Oh, I, I actually... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't... Uh, okay, never mind. Oh. Right. Macron has two ranks. I, I didn't know Erdo only had one. Oh, that's good. That's I have good. Looks just like, um, enough... That's all the yeah, it's like, yeah, these chips kind of work like a cybernetic in that they are kind of just wired in to work off some work off like the uh, I guess passive power generated from a person's body or whatnot. You know, however cybernetics work. Um, so when someone dies, presumably it stops doing the receiving. It probably has like a period of battery power, but it doesn't last too long. Okay, understood. Thank you, GM. All right, well, uh, with our, armed with this new knowledge, let's, uh, you want to still search through the rooms ever again? We can go, dare, totally go there. Rio says, yeah, we should totally look for any of their personal effects to see what is missing, because, uh, <coughs> they were Jedi. Mm -hmm. Goodness only knows what they had on them. Yeah, it looks like the quarters are, like, on the other side of the base, so there's, like, two different buildings that you can see there that are across by that road. So you'll have to move across, but I mean, it's not a huge distance. It's just you have to go out of this building into another. One, one important thing: what is our mission timer? Uh, it's not important to you. <laughs> it's not fine. important to us. Okay. Don't worry about it. All right. It actually isn't all. It isn't super important for you guys. So just proceed as you would. All right. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, actually, as as you guys are crossing through the uh, the gap between the two buildings, the gristle stops uh, all of a sudden and kind of cocks his head off in one direction and mumbles to himself for a moment and then speaks up to the rest of you. Did, did any of you see that? Uh, see what, Gristle? I uh, saw... And he goes quiet for a moment and then he just starts running off into the forest. Well, that was helpful. We all will follow. Yeah. Crystal, wait. 
I'll pull up my I'll pull up my lancer at this point as well. Yeah, it's not super dark, but it is uh, getting there. It's the sun has gone down and it it is slowly uh, blackening. I guess uh, there's no well, there's a lot of cloud cover, so the moon isn't helping a whole lot. But it's not too bad. The the storm in the distance is providing some odd illumination. And in this kind of bluish color that you can see. But uh So you end up chasing Gristle not too far, but he heads into the forest and he kind of calls back something you can't really understand, probably just saying, Well he does it what you can make out is just I, I see it or something like that. And uh as you pursue him. Uh, let's see. The crew follows Gristle to a small plateau, just a short way into the jungle. Ahead, the trees open into a small clearing where the canopy gives way to open sky. Immediately, they notice the kaleidoscopic glow of twisting vines that reach all the way across the ground in large fronds that seem to shed a misty glow as the wind pushes them aside. Compared to the rest of the forest, this place is overgrown with vibrant life. Marking the borders of the clearing are a series of large, dark stones which seem to attract the creeping grasp of the flora. Across from you, a massive shape heaves with unsteady rhythm, marked by the sound of deep breaths. It doesn't look towards you. Instead, it produces a deep chatter with its beak and dips its head forward, showing great restraint for a predator, the, for a predator the size of a starfighter. There's an obvious wound on one of its legs, and some of its fe feathers are stained even deeper red. Alright. Yeah, it's the analogy for the plants, or just for this whole situation, I guess. We'll call it a hard... Alright, well, anyone have any ranks in it? Oh, Erdogan probably has a better thing with the whole five intelligence. I think Aiden has one rank. <laughs> I, can check. I certainly do not. Nope, I have outer rim, never mind. A hard? A hard. Hmm. As far as the plants... You Is that really... those yours are from the gristle thing? So I don't think you've made any checks. Oh. Since... Oh, wait. No, you didn't put the boost on that one, though. Yeah, I'm not sure. Birdo hasn't used a gristle boost yet. Do you want me to roll that? Yeah, you can if you want. Okay, sure. Ah. I can't roll any successes. It's okay. Um, as far as the plant life, uh, you can't really get a grasp on what exactly this stuff is. It looks like almost a sort of derivative of all the other plants around it. Um, but whatever it is, it's it's naturally unnatural, I guess. It looks odd that it's all in just in this one spot started to grow up and start changing colors and just kind of renewed with a a certain degree of liveliness that you don't find anywhere else in the forest, especially at this time of night, and the fact that it's all glowing is a little strange. What's, I guess, even stranger is that the blood eagle that's kind of perched across from you on one of the rocks is just kind of just sitting there, yeah, kind of in a very noble pose, I guess, with its head tucked down, but very obviously pained by something. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's try and treat it. It seems like it's yeah, was, almost asking. Uh, Erdo feels... I was about to ask if Erdo could... Yeah. That this place is utterly steeped in the light side of the forest. It is permeated through and through with it. And as he kind of centers himself and realizes where he is, he remembers from the time he visited this place. Uh, this area is where Volvif and Shorn and Hank would go to train and meditate. Hmm. So Shoran would go with them here. Yeah. Gristle's just kind of stopped. He's looking at the bird, but mostly he's looking around. He scratches his head and his ears go back again and he uh I don't see it anymore. I, I lost it. What, what was it you saw, Gristle? Uh I don't know. Something. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I saw it go in this direction. It wasn't that, whatever that is. It points at the Blood Eagle. Well, I would... Was it, like, person-sized, or...? 
Uh, I don't know. I barely saw it. Okay. Maybe some. Maybe it is this force calling you here in a way. Baloof was a dear friend of yours, I would imagine. And I don't believe that this creature is here as an accident either. Maybe we should help it. And Maybe. I, I mean, <laughs> Real will try, but he doesn't have a medical kit or any training. I mean, I think I think that's Erdo's uh, thing. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see here real quick. All together. Um, this can be made by anyone. Um, just a, a hard survival check. All right. I think I actually have ranks in that one. Uh, I can provide four cunning, but no ranks. All right, I, love I have ranks. a rank, I believe. I do. How hard was it? Hard, average or hard? Hard. hard. Uh, I'll flip, I guess. And I'm, oh, I, didn't, I get the gristle boost, too. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, good. you guys kind of take a few moments to figure out how to approach, and uh, Joken ends up leading in with, with Erdo and... It doesn't move um, in any meaningful way towards you. It doesn't turn its head at you. It just kind of keeps itself tucked down, but it seems to tolerate what you're doing. And the closer you get, you can definitely feel a sense that it's kind of been pacified or somehow calmed by this place, whatever it is. And as you get closer, you can see more clearly the, the wound on its leg. Um, and there's also another like cut in its in its breast, like where there's a few feathers missing as well. What uh, can we discern the nature of these cuts? Um, they look physical. They don't like they don't look burned in like a lightsaber or anything like that. It looks like some kind of blade or just sharp object ended up piercing it. Well, let us help the creature. All right. Since you guys calmed it, it will be, or if you approached it without startling it, it'll be um, a hard medicine check. Anyone have training by chance? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, much just there, I think. Uh, he's got five intellect and two medicine, and then an upgrade to. I'd feel free to flip a destiny as well. And you, of course, will have unskilled assistance from either myself or Jokin. Take your pick. Or really, anyone. Difficulty <laughs> again? That's hard. I'm basing it off the fact that it seemed like Jokin was the one who did the roll, but it was with Macron's help. Oh, remember that you have uh, Crystal's upgrade for free. Nice. But holy crap, it doesn't even matter. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that was with the upgrade, but yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Um, yeah, after... Working on it for a time, it seems very tolerant of even if even when you think you might be pushing a little too far with how much pain you might be like tempting, it stays very calm and just kind of and while you are healing it, it does end up you know deigning to look upon you and just observes quietly. Its eye is you know very large um, and just stares at you as you start patching it up and eventually you get its its leg in a relatively nice state, and you probably administer some kind of, you know, pain relief, something, to make it feel a little bit better, I guess. And it's breathing steadies, and after a few moments, it kind of per hops up a little higher on the rock and then spreads its wings out, and pretty much almost touching both sides of the uh, the clearing here. And it lets out a, uh, a deeper shriek, I guess, and then launches up uh, out of through the canopy, into the sky. Hmm. We did the right thing. Is there anything else about this clearing here? Or is it just the fact that it's very light side focused? Yeah, is this anywhere near close where the beeps were going off? Just by um, random chance? It's not far, actually. So, since it's just outside the base and so are the beeps, you could still... Probably divert and get there in a decent amount of time. Have we got any more pings since then? Not yet. Oh. All right. 
So is it do we need to go down this cliff or is it just we can it's further down the area as it were? Or we, oh, you can just backtrack and it's it won't be like too difficult terrain to get there. Okay. Well then we should uh we should head on. Whatever we're supposed to do, I feel like we've we've done it here. Unless Erdogan wanted unless you wanted to use your, your mystical stuff there, Erdogan to really connect with the area. Uh, the Jawa shrugs. The last little thing there. Alright, so you guys are heading off toward that last location of the beeping? Uh, Is that what I'm getting here? Unless Erda wanted to do something before we left, yeah. He just said he's, he's meditating before you guys move oh, out. I missed that. Alright, let's go on. Alright, so that last location is quite close by. Um, it doesn't take you too long at all, maybe about two or three minutes to trek back. Um, uh, you track down the exact coordinates. It's just some random patch of jungle, really. Um, you probably spend a few moments looking around and... Uh, yep, it's time to find a trail. Yeah, after a little bit. You don't find much of a trail yet. What you see, though, is that the exact location there is basically a, a pile of scrapped stuff and then one, what looks like one kind of like chip sitting in the middle and some blood stains in the grass. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I would like to investigate the scraps. Uh, you got a call at this time over the comms from the other team. Uh, droid high singer scene. No one else but bounty hunters are afoot from Saber. Uh, so this it may not have been an imperial attack, but the bounty hunters hunting after Shorin. Interesting. Perhaps that is why he collapsed the roof. He was defending himself from them. Could be. Yeah, it looks like what looks it looks like what you have here is a small pile of those chips that have been Surgically removed from people. That's what it seems. Like. So, definitely surgically removed and not just like ripped out or something, right? Like they. Um, I, I guess. I mean, there isn't a lot of blood. You can't really tell uh, the, the nature of the removal, how, yeah. how rough it went, but there's there's some blood on them still. Rio will collect them all up. Uh, is there any identif identifying marks? Or could I use my my data from the uh, medical kit to uh, not from the medical terminal to kind of. Figure out who may have been whose chips they may have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, if you cross-reference like serial numbers, I guess. Um, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. You, you count through it, you see uh, mostly just the names of some not too high up level officers, but some of like the uh, soldiers on the base, and one of them you see is is Renzi's. All right, I'll chat with the crew. So either they didn't want to be found, or someone took them and removed their chips. Hmm. That's not good. All right. Well then, um, yeah, I will still, I will take them all and you know, keep them with me here. Okay. All right, but I'll, uh, you know, I think this is some. Um, this uh, uh, we need we need someone skilled in tracking. See, maybe I know they're skilled themselves and, you know, pathfinding, but maybe they left something we can find. And I'll, I'll turn to Jokin with that. Is Jokin skilled in tracking? Well, survival covers tracking, so... Well, that's what I meant. Perception is something Jokin is way, way better at. Hmm. As, as a side note, not that it necessarily matters, but I do have Outdoorsman that reduces overland travel times by 50%, if that matters. That could help. Yeah, it also re removes a uh, setback from difficult terrain. Yeah, actually, it says outdoor effects in general, like environmental effects. Yeah, That's so you want to try to find a trail from here, leading from maybe whoever left these here. Oops. That's what I'm getting from. Our... Yes, that's that's what we're, we're here. To, we're here to find the survivors. Let's let's do it. Sure. Um. Okay, this will be. Let me check real quick. I want to make sure, because we had something set for this. Okay. So it'll be a hard survival check with... Uh, 
Yeah, I'll upgrade it. There we go. All right. I will work with uh, Macron again, I suppose. If you want that cunning, sure. Got to get the cunning. No cunning. I mean, not enough cunning. No. It looks like from here you actually can't find almost any sign of a trail. Whoever left those here was either really good at covering up where they were moving or uh, or there was no one there. But you can probably gather that someone's probably here. They're just very sneaky. Um, could we maybe, like... No, just, just, just as a... Um, where are we exactly? Like in the forest, right? Yeah, in the forest. Pretty, pretty close to the base. You can still see the base from where you are. Are there any, like... Um, potential caves or anything nearby? Or places where a cave could be that we can maybe check out? Uh, maybe, sure. Um, yeah, if you guys want to kind of look around, just kind of inspect this area for a while. Yeah, give me a... Just give me an average perception or vigilance, any of you. Because why come out here and then go back to the base, you know? So they, they must be out here still somewhere. So any of us but only one person or... Uh, well, you can all do it, basically. That's what I'm saying. Average perception, was it? Yeah. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, you got two triumphs at least, Jack. There's yeah, I yeah. would have thought that, that would have been enough to give me successes, but man. So close. All right, just waiting for these results so I can consolidate would, them. Would. I don't have enough one boost would save my roll. Never mind. What are we uh, looking for, sir? <laughs> Just uh, places where people might be hiding. I forgot my gristle boost, so I had that under mine. Oh, okay. All right, sure, I'll do it. Two, why not? Wow, well, lots of stuff. Hmm. All right. Let's see here. What it looks like is you guys don't seem to find anyone hiding nearby, um, but as you kind of range out a little bit, um, it looks like in the hollow of a tree on the other side, a little further out, there is another body slumped against it, and something kind of resting against his shoulder. Looks like he was carrying some gear. Does that mean is it missing now, or...? Uh, he still has something on him. Uh, Rio will go up and make sure... Uh, actually, check to see if he's, he really is dead, or, <laughs> you know? He's no medic, but uh. Yeah, he's seen. He he he's definitely dead. All right, then it's time to be pragmatic and search the body. Yeah, it looks like a, another of the rebel soldiers. He's actually almost fully geared up. It looks like he had a pretty rushed time in getting to his stuff. Um. But propped up against his shoulder on the tree is actually a missile tube. Oh. And there's a satchel on his side, which looks like it still has um. All those stripes. Yeah, two missiles left in it. Yeah, uh, Jokin will be right. the thing. Yeah, Jokin would probably... Jokin is good at blasters, but Jokin is also good at gunnery. Yeah. Um, how does it look like he was killed? Was it blaster fire, or...? Um, it looks similar to the guy that you found in this cell. Uh, he has a lot of, like, lacerations on him. Um, to detect, so like, like... Knives or swords. Yeah, to detect, like, actual cause of death, we'll say it's an average medicine. Erdo? He's on it. Yeah, it looks like this guy bled out. He eventually collapsed and just bled to death here, basically. So, can he tell what kind of blade it was? Like, from the wounds? Uh, yeah, with the advantages, sure. Um, they are similar to, like, vibro swords, but the blades are a bit wider, a little more... Meteor, I guess. Not quite pre precision stuff, but some, like, hacking wounds, basically, on him. Okay, does he have his chip? Uh, no. Um, if you search him over, it looks like he is one of the people who had it removed. You can see a little incision that's still kind of bloodied on the back of his neck. Yeah, so maybe... Uh, I'm... Uh, a real infer is gonna... Uh, well, it seems like maybe they were using the chips to track them. Yeah, they must have been tracking them from 
and so that they the rebels removed them themselves. It looks like. And maybe that's why they were beeping. They were beeping five days ago. Maybe they were observing the area, trying to get a hold of maybe how many people there were. Something I would have done. Sorry. So uh, what else did we? Uh, I'll ask in the chat. Never mind. Yeah, they're just the normal missiles for the for the missile tube. Okay. None of the special. Ones. Oh, on the body you find a missile tube and two missiles in the, in his satchel. Oh, okay. Poor bastard. But, so whoever can look... take it with him, huh? Interesting. Yeah. Maybe they were in a hurry. Now, can I do a, a knowledge underworld check to kind of see who would, what kind of bounty hunters would normally use nothing but meteor vibro swords? I'm not I'm really sorry, expecting what you... much. Like, uh, you know, kind of... To... Kinda... I'm trying to, uh, I guess, see what kind of merc what bounty hunting like group or, or guild might use these kind of tactics. Hmm. I, I'm I'm assuming it's going to be very hard. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't seem like they've used blasters at all, pretty much. There's almost yeah. blaster fire, but every, all the bios we found have had horrible, you know, vibro okay. blade wounds. <clears throat> Get a better grasp of like, the entire situation. You probably have to go back and look at the thing. But as far as this guy goes, yeah, you can give me um. We'll call it daunting knowledge warfare, just to see what kind of see what we can glean just from what this guy's experienced, basically. Knowledge warfare. Uh, Jokin has a rank or two, right? Yes, uh, two ranks. And would this be one of those times we could add our contribution bonus because we're thinking about groups that Rebel Intelligence might know about? Uh, sure, yeah. So that's so five. five posts. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say that was handy. Yeah, so Rhea looks around at this guy, and he sees that, based on a lot of the wounds, a lot of them a lot of them are coming in from different angles. It looks like, even though they're kind of simultaneous, um, if you could guess, based on just what he sees in, in the weapons, it looks like this guy was attacked by a lot of dudes hmm. at the same time. So does it look at all so familiar, like maybe them. some kind of heralds of the scorekeeper, you know? Um, you've seen there. some weapons on their belts that look like they might be something like this. Okay. Um, some kind of like Viper machetes. I, I am going to... I'll let our um, the other team know we might have score, the heralds of the scorekeeper, scorekeeper running around. Just maybe. It's possible. Keep an eye out for, you know, invisible or cloaked folks. Look out for things you can't see. Trust me. <laughs> It'll work out. Oh, yeah. That seems important to know. <laughs> to let them know these things are nasty. All right. Although we do know that the um, the heralds are more prone to sniping than running up and stabbing guys. Yeah, that is true. Better to be overly prepared. Yeah. Um, so do you think we can find anything else out out here? I mean. Uh, actually, could someone try Rancy, maybe? I don't I mean, I don't know if it'll work, but... Yeah, let's... I don't know if she would answer at this point, but... I mean, it's worth a shot. I mean, we don't have, you know... We didn't find the trail. We don't have... Yeah. They're not going to ping anymore. All right, so Aiden will pull out his comm and, and tune into Rancy's frequency and try to try to raise her on the comm. Um, you don't get anything. You you can key it in, and you kind of hear just nothing, basically, on the other end. It's not necessarily that it's offline. It's just that there's nothing uh nothing coming in from it. All right. Can Erdo try and figure out where? Can Erdo try and figure out where they would go based on like rebel tactics or training protocols? Hmm. Yeah, I guess this would be... You'd be really going on a limb, like, just... Well, doing that would probably require a map of the area to really know, like some kind of topographical map of, like, the actual island, maybe? To actually get a handle on the well, geography? maybe for a decimal point, uh, we were given that from uh, the guy. What's his name? Uh, the, the general that preached us about this? Crix Mating. Yes, that's the guy. Uh, you had schematics of the facility. He hasn't. He hadn't given you maps of the island. Um, 
Uh, well, I'm saying maybe, maybe for Destiny Point, maybe he did actually. I mean, uh, it seems like a fair trade. Uh, I mean, if not. Sure. All right. Yeah. That would seem kind of handy in general, and something we probably should have asked for. Uh, yeah. So, to kind of to extrapolate something like this, there would probably still be a knowledge warfare, right? You think? I mean, uh, it I makes the most sense to me. I would say so. But uh, pretty difficult. So we'll call it daunting. Upgraded once. Oh, that was a weird flip. I don't know why oh, I did that. Oh wait, hold on. Who, who's rolling what now? Uh, it's a daunting. Upgraded once. Knowledge warfare. Okay, right. I can give two. Okay, it looks like he has two rings too. Never mind. And Joe can add five boost dice since it's his rebel involved. <laughs> right. So I'll take an unskilled boost from someone as well. Don't oh, wow. I... What was that, Ben? Hmm? Nothing. Rodogan made Nothing. the hole. And uh, yeah, he rocked it. Uh, okay. So you spend a little bit of time studying the map, um, trying to project based on what you know of Rensi and her unit and their tactics. Um, where they might have gone if they were to have bugged out from this base. Uh, you follow a pretty tough path, actually. Um, man, I feel like I should probably make a check here for you guys just to navigate this. Well, uh, because I have the map now, we'll call it uh, average survival. Okay. Just to navigate this safely. Aiden can unskilled assist whoever's doing the check, which I think is joking, right? Uh, it'll be Jokin and Macron. Oh, okay. uh, this will be just be one for the group. Person leading. That's fine. So no assistance. Oh, I mean, someone you can assist. I'm just saying, not everyone has to make it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's better. Excellent. Yep. So Joking kind of oversees the the pathfinding, as it were, making sure you guys can actually follow the route well enough. Um, and as you move along, you do see actually signs of. So a few more signs of people moving through. It looks like um, as you cross the distance, there are actually signs of fighting. More signs of fighting in the, in the jungle itself. You find some stray, like, scorch marks on trees, but mostly as you look back toward the base. So it looks like the fire that was occurring was shooting back toward the base itself. Um, so they were... So it looks like the cover's attacking here. isn't using blasters at all, like we thought. Um, you still do see some facing the other way, but most the, the majority of it is going back the other way. Hmm. So th these scorch marks, are they larger than... Uh... Let's see. Could I extrapolate what kind of weapon was being used from the size of the scorch mark? Uh, sure. Um, that sounds like an impossible check. <laughs> well, 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 not necessarily. I, I would. I would still probably put it that daunting or uh, formidable. <laughs> but it could be like a light or heavy check, also, to try to you know. It's not That's only true. your skill to blaster, but your knowledge of. No, I would definitely say more of that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not good with either yeah. of those, but I, I we'll, still... we'll call it uh, daunting warfare, or if you do want to use either range skill, you could do that, or even gunnery. I, I think I'll have to use. I'll just, uh, I'll use my knowledge warfare. You said daunting. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Maybe, maybe I can get assistance from our good buddy here, Mr. Jokin. Sure. Two rank. Would his contribution ranks add into this? Uh, yeah, actually, in this case. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah. It, it, good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, you recognize these scorch marks pretty much exactly. They are... Uh, they are... Um, the ones facing back toward the base are pretty much exclusively from A280C rifles. So it's standard issue rebellion rifles. Gotcha. And the ones uh, going toward opposite? Um, the ones you see going opposite are much larger and fewer and far between. Looks like from some heavier weapons. And based on the angle, it looks like they're probably coming from higher up. So they're in the trees. <laughs> let's, let's watch the trees, folks. In fact, on, on, on figuring that, he will actually scan. This Rio will scan the trees. <laughs> Tall things are scary in general. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I mean, just keeping a lookout on the, in the trees, I guess. Uh, yes. We'll just call it a, a, a daunting perception or vigilance for anyone, I guess. All right. I don't see nothing. <laughs> Almost. Oh, hey, then I'll take my boost. Come on, one success. No! <laughs> Whew. That's okay. Hmm, let's see. 
I mean, one way to find your targets is let other people lead them to you. You know what I mean? Up in the trees. Sorry, one second. All right, looks like um, that's some moving around. Let's say uh. Wait, you guys did make uh, that thing over here. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I was just thinking what to do with the threat, but I haven't. I'll just work into this. So, with a little bit of a ins inspection around this area, um, you do find what looks like signs of a tree having been scaled. When you look up, there's nothing in it anymore, but it looks like there are some claw marks in the side where someone had climbed up it. What, what kind of claw marks? Would you say they're Tendoshin? Yeah, similar, similar size. All right. I can't. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd be able to tell exactly. I'm no xenobiologist. Sounds good. Okay. So I guess yeah, you guys keep moving in in that direction. Um, after. Not too long. Well, it's actually quite a while, to be honest. Um, you do keep on following this trail. It looks like it's not a huge distance to traverse, but it's been traversed very slowly. It looks like it was almost... Um, the further you get out, it's pretty much constant, these signs of, of a fighting retreat, basically. Um, you end up going down into this little ravine and then coming back up into the forest, and eventually... In the distance, you start hearing like uh, irregular blaster discharges somewhere up um, ahead of you in the in the forest. All right, so yeah, let's. Uh, <clears throat> Rio would like to survey the area before he moving on. I'm looking for traps if. I would have set an explosive charge or two for anyone heading down this. You said it's a, uh, you know, pretty narrow path you said we're heading down now? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, you... I'm searching for uh, traps. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. All right, so we got one person who wants to be careful and one person who's in a hurry. Uh, I'll just say Rio at least gets well, to have a look before so, anyone know, I'll, charges I'll, I'll do it really quick. So I'll add, uh, I'll say, three setbacks for just doing it really fast. That's fine. <laughs> We'll call it a, a, a hard perception. All right, hard perception, and I get one boost from Erdogan being there. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's let's see what happens. Oh, I almost got setbacks. Hey, it's something. All right. Well, well, well I, yeah, it doesn't matter at this point. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, right as Erdogan's moving up, Rio kind of I guess stops him as he spots ahead. What looks like a. Uh, a trap that's been fashioned out of a frag grenade uh, tucked behind a rock, basically, with some kind of crude trigger on it. Hmm. I, uh, I got this. <laughs> I'm gonna try and disarm this. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll more just of a be skullduggery at this point, right? Oh well, yeah. Well, nah. it could be other ways. Isn't disarming it's... traps mechanics? Yeah, it can be. Usually, setting a bomb is a, uh, well, a mechanics check. So I imagine you know, the same way be somewhere. I need to look back over the skills since I, I haven't actually read anything mechanics since Edge of Empire, but they they kind of overlap. But I'll, I'll use mechanics if I'm allowed to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I mean it'll it? just be uh, hmm, wall flip. I guess it would be. That would be opposed against hard. whoever planted it. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Um, and it'd probably be their skull duggery. That's probably their highest, I'm guessing. Yeah, with the flip, we'll call it two red, one purple. Two red, one purple. All right. And I, I have a custom toolkit, so I actually get my boost die from that. Let's not forget that. <laughs> custom toolkit's only for repairing stuff, though. Aw. It was worth a shot. But Erdogan will give me skilled assistance with his awesome, mighty intellect. I will. I will take it. Oh, no. Whoever did this was really good. I don't think I could be able to get this without making it explode. <laughs> yeah. So, it's uh, like, um, you can't disarm it, but you do recognize that... The way it's positioned, this is probably placed by whoever is retreating. Uh, that's right. pretty obvious, though. Um, Maybe I can see a path around it. Or we can probably walk over it if it's... Uh, but I can't... We can probably just avoid the trigger mechanism. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a, maybe an easy coordination check for people stepping over, huh? 
<laughs> yeah, you can, you can avoid it. You just can't salvage it and reuse it, basically. All right, well, I, that's what I wanted, but it's okay. Pretty good, whoever did this. Yes. Um, all right. Possibly Renzi. Yeah, and actually up ahead, um, it's a little ways, and the sound gets a bit louder, and then starts becoming a little more frequent as you head up this hill. Um, let me switch over here real quick, just making sure. Uh, it looks like kind of huddled up on some more rocks. There is a, a group of people who are pretty bad off. They're very rough looking. Um, and actually, I'm going to uh, hide this real quick before I switch this over. Sorry, I'm not hiding anything, actually. Don't worry about that. <laughs> It actually doesn't course. matter a whole lot. There is absolutely nothing there. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> okay. You know, and we'll, I'll keep that in mind for later. So I'm guessing, mm -hmm. the, do we recognize, are they in rebel uniforms by chance? Yes, the ones who are up, um, higher up, and who appear to be firing right now are, at least from where you can see, you can see like the, uh, the shape of like a rebel soldier's helmet on one of them, and some of them don't have helmets and things like that, but they are still... Uh, all right, well rebels. then, you know what, let's, let's rush in and assist our brothers. Well, maybe not kin, but... <gasps> Mav, never mind, let's go! Yeah, you see, at the back of, at the, back of the group, um, Renzi, who's trying to give orders as best she can, and Mav next to her, who's looking really, really haggard at this point. Um, and, it, and it looks like wherever they were, where they were firing from had been... Uh, Kind of away from you guys. <clears throat> we'll say, uh, hmm, here. Hmm, here. They look like they're too closely packed together for a missile to do much good. Oh, oh. these guys aren't the ones you're, aren't the ones attacking. Those are actually the rebels that are with them. Oh, and they're hurt a little bit, looks like. People attacking are actually not even on the map yet. Sorry. Okay, look, look, you know what? We need to find the attackers. You know, we could totally no. do a flanking maneuver. We could, uh, we could get them over. You can't see them just yet, but you can hear them. There is almost a deafening amount of hissing coming from the forest and the sounds of feet heading through the brush with very little regard for, uh, for subtlety. Rio has a cutting plan. <laughs> okay, well... Well, you, well, you guys can do what you want. Rio is going to try and go around with an armed explosive. Macron's diving right towards the rebels to help reinforce them. Nana would want to do the same. Aiden as well. Sort of like extra skin pack that he had from before to uh, Nana and Mac. Actually, could Aiden? Um, I'm, I'm sorry, that was kind of muffled. Were you giving Macron a stim pack? Erdo found five stim packs in the med bay. He's going to give Macron five stim packs to distribute to the rebels. Okay. Nana. So, um, could Aiden, um, you actually, actually get an advantage point, like climb a tree? Yeah, what we're going to do here, let's see, let me just, anyone who wants to try to not be noticed by these guys coming in, just give me an average stealth check. And if you succeed, you can put yourself in whatever position you want. Okay, stealth. I'm going to flip a destiny for this. <laughs> it's important to me. As will I. Oh. There we yes. Go. Good. I want to be literally like behind them, <laughs> right here. <laughs> is that is that okay, Jim? Uh, it's a little close, but yeah, you can get around their side if you want. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll say it take at least another maneuver to get in. You know where I need to be. Uh, would you? Do I need to stealth if I'm pretty much throwing myself into the fray? No, like, you can if if you want to like get around them, you can stealth. But if you're just like running up to them here, you can make it. Okay, then yeah. If you're I'm kind of coming from behind them. Plant myself like right right here. Maybe right here. <laughs> Not yeah, in so the tree, but next to Mav. Get yourself where you want to be, and then you can roll initiative. And if you so, succeed on your stealth, you can use cool. Alright. Uh, where is my... I think it's the same either way, honestly. Vigilance and... Yeah. And I take it, James, you're handling this? Yep. Oh, that is just an atrocious roll. Actually, I think I have rapid reactions, and I think I'll use it here. Let me double check. I know it's in oh. the demolitions pool. Use the alternative. Okay, do I not? Yes. Yeah, so I am a, a two point one, and I'll take the one strain for it. So come on, I have to 
Keep off the egg. Oh, we have to open up the other dossier. Yeah, because they're using... The already in some, some combat, looks like. Well, even if they're not, they're going to be at some point. Uh, it looks like they have already rolled for something. Hmm. One of the NPCs rolled an 8.1 for theirs. It's scary. It wasn't Saber? He's only the one who rolled. Uh, Saber actually beat him, but one of them, I just know that one of the, he doesn't have a value yet. Goodness. Apparently he's already collected one conflict. Oh, that. Well, this is long. some serious stuff. Uh, you guys got a call in from the other team that they found Shorin. And Rock is going after him. Uh, well. uh, we rendered them back that Shorn may not have been the one to do this. It's like, don't... He may not... He, he may be... I don't want to say innocent, but... Not responsible at the moment. Like, he may not be the culprit. Okay, no, no, Macron will go... Uh, can we recognize the Trandoshans that they have like a symbol we can recognize? Oh wait, we don't even really see them yet, do we? We just hear them. Oh no, you can see them coming now. Now that you're kind of up with them where the rebels are from the height, you can see them. It's, uh, they look like... Sorry, I'll roll their issue. Just four of them real quick. There we go. They're not great. Okay, Mac and Lule, Trandoshans are here. Shorn may not have been the one to do... Well, he did, but not in the way we thought. What? Don't kill Shorn yet. <laughs> yeah. I've heard you did that, don't worry. Okay. So yeah, these guys are uh, not great. They do bear what looks like similar similar gear to the, the Heralds, but these guys don't look like they're um, like the top dogs. They don't look like the snipers you've, you've seen that are heavily armored and some are augmented. These guys are more like lightly armored soldiers. Most of them are wielding uh, what, what Rio identified as like vibro machetes, basically. So, um, these are the cannon fodder. Maybe. <laughs> the snipers are out somewhere else. Probably chasing after Shore, and he's the priority target. We or hidden somewhere nearby. Or that. Come on, let's, let's be positive. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is an impressively, like, level-looking initiative. Like, the winner got a 3.4. for happens for us. Um, so we have the first turn. All right. Um, um, well, I would does, be uh, to one missile tube them. <laughs> rocket salvo, yeah. So what range are we at? Um, from up there to the furthest back group would be long, but these ones are currently in medium. And so basically, I'd be, with a blast, I'd be able to hit any of the groups of three, but not multiple groups of three. Yeah. Well, you do have two missiles, right? Do I have? Was there a missile already in the tube, or do I just have two missiles? Uh, you have two. Two total. Well, minions don't take strain. Maybe now's not the moment. Um... I mean, when else are you going to use it during this mission? I don't know. Someone bigger and badder? Hey, there's always the... When we come back together with the other group, you never know what's going to happen there. It's true. And missile tubes have been used to great effect in those moments. They have, yeah. You can use one and save the other. You do remember that they, use, they did I'm spot a high priority target in high singer. I'm going to pull my blasters and go after a group here. Okay. You said it's medium? Yeah. Uh, any. Their defense one. Their defense one. All right, let me count my boosts. <clears throat> <laughs> Four, six, eight. You know I what? Like I'll, I'll flip against it for fun. All right. Um, so I, I pulled both blasters. I add an automatic advantage. So I'll add that in, and then or I guess I only add that advantage if I hit. But I'm gonna go on the. Well, no, I won't. That's too presumptuous. All right, here we go. Okay. Yes, I did hit. <laughs> um. So blaster number one. Why do you uh, have that many boosts, exactly? What was that? Why do you have so many boosts? Four ranks in quick strike. My blaster is... <laughs> oh, wow. Two, I aimed twice. <laughs> well, I'll give myself the strain. I just about that momentarily. <laughs> Number one is... 15 pierce two. 
blaster number two is uh, 16 pierce two. So it was 15 pierce two? Yeah, 15, then 16. All right. So the wounds are just dealt, like, across each one, right, with with, with meeting groups? They're not, like, the soak is only applied once for the group? Yeah, the soak is yep. once per hit. Okay. And then it just keeps pouring over. Yep. So 15 pierce 2. And it does have to exceed for each one, too, so it's not like it's... Yeah. Actually, actually I'm going to hit this group... For 15 pierce 2. I, I have Spitfire, so I can assign secondary hits to other targets. So 15 pierce 2 to that one. 16 pierce 2 to this one. Sorry to make it confusing at the last second. All right, so you create each one of them too, right? Back, <laughs> up. Exactly. Oh, man. That's, a, that's an interesting one, then. Nine, and then this one takes... So you kill one from each group, just okay. outright. And then and then I'm, gonna create, I'm gonna create each group so that'll kill off the healthy one from each group. Oh yeah? Can you choose that? A crit deals a full minion's worth of damage, so the easiest way to think of it is to just add all that damage to one minion and kill it. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, it doesn't do damage. It just, it just kills, kills a million. Well, it kills, kills it, but the way you think of it, if you're counting their wound pool, is to just deal an entire minion's worth of damage. But you're correct. But also, it's correct from the threshold. Either or. Yeah, no, that's true. So, uh, let's see, that was two for that. So I still have three um, advantages. So I guess I'll just uh, pass a boost and a floating boost. Aiden will take those next time, or at least one of them, if no one minds. No, sounds good. Um, so who's the, up, who's the next? Up next? Uh, it is one NPC. NPC next. Okay. Um, all right. So I said the, uh, these guys are along. Hmm. So these guys are a medium. They're just going to move up and start engaging the rebel soldiers here. Curses. So I will actually roll their attack for this. So there's three of them. And they have this. And rebel soldiers will be... Are the rebel soldiers effectively one big group, or are they a couple smaller ones or individuals? Uh, there are a few smaller ones. So those will be attacking that. They actually completely miss. It looks like the rebels are in at a good enough position that the Crandotians can't get right up on them quick enough. And... They're not able to uh, get a strike out in time, and the rebels are able to retreat back a little more before they can hit. All right. All right. Uh, if I may, uh, Rio would like to. That long range group, would that be medium from where he is? Uh, yeah. I mean, Aiden can hit them at long as well. Well, well I, I, I got this. I right, use this explosive it. sometimes. So I will take the two <laughs> maneuvers to get to short, and then I, I'm, I will pop my explosives. Would that put. Uh, Erdogan would still be at medium, right? Uh, he'd be from there probably about short, but. All right. Well, then I need. Well, dang it, Erdogan. <laughs> okay. Then I only have select detonation of one, so I have to blow myself up, or Erdogan, since you're short. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I don't want to do either of those. So you know what? I will. Um. I will just stay hidden where I am. I guess. Gosh. Okay. <laughs> I was going to try and blow up those two groups when they were together, but they ran away. So I don't have to take strain for that. You have multiple slots if Erdo wants to get out of the way. But. I mean, it's a bit late now. He already started. Get out of the way. Yeah. Erdo is happy to get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Would, would it be short? Like if I want to be. Really, I want to be between those two groups and blow them both up. <laughs> uh, you probably that wouldn't be able possible. to get both of them exactly. Right, then I'd like the group that hasn't been hit yet. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I... Sorry, if Erdo goes first? How yeah. Far... yeah, well, Erdo can go first. That group. Okay. So they're uh -oh. medium from you. Medium? Okay. Not anymore. So you got one regular boost and one floating boost, if you wanted to use both. That sounds awesome. What's the difficulty to hit these guys? Uh, they're just defense one, so... Oops. Okay. Oh. Uh, 
Got her up. I was really hoping to get something snuck up on guys. It's okay. Okay, here we go. Erdo leaps over. And, uh, let's see. These are minions, so staggered probably doesn't do much, does it? Um, I don't know how exactly the interaction works. I think works. it would technically stagger the whole group. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well then, um, let's use two, let's use those for two more advantages, and let's crit and stagger and hit for, um, seven pierce four. Just a flurry of blows, really. Seven pierce four? I'm sorry? Say so seven pierce four? Seven pierce four. So Erdo leaps in, uh, slugs one, grabs his rifle, Hits another in the uh, stomach with it, and uh, I don't know, kicks the last one. All right. I like it. So they are now concussed, right? Is it redoing that? So I'll just do a little, do a little symbol there, just so we know. Yeah, all concussed. Okay, I think you guys still have, uh, still have another slot. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, well, now down, we'll, we'll say that or, well, we'll say Erding went before Rio. <laughs> That's what we're saying. So uh, yeah. I, I, I'm now going to explode this explosive charge, and it's a, I'm only doing one, so it's an easy check. Um, Don't forget the strain too. Yes, I'll add that on. All right, yeah. Uh, Yes, it explodes, no. and I managed to save myself from the explosion. Rio sets the charge in just a manner that he will actually escape the blast. And Is that uh, just dead night? Uh, I need to double check the dead And I add one, so that's 16 damage. 16? Yeah, 16 oh my God. with one advantage. Just and enough I to kill every single one. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear a, a, a very happy, Yo, teeny! <laughs> Wait, how is his 16 enough to kill all of them, but mine wasn't? Because he, he, he's doing a blast. He's so dealing to each one individually. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, yeah. So now I'm down to only... I had... Uh... Well, it wouldn't be a blast 16, would it? Yeah, because it does blast explosive. everyone well, at short range. It hits everyone at short range. But I have selective detonation, so I can miss myself. <laughs> uh, in fact, actually, I have powerful blast as well. Um, weapons and grenades, but one per rank of for blast. Split. So yeah, so actually, sorry, it's 17. It doesn't matter. The yeah, 16 was matter, enough yeah. to kill them all. 17, just barely okay. enough to kill them all in one, in one blast. Good. Good. I only have four more detonite charges on me. Only four. Hey, they're cheap and not very rare at all. Pack them together in a nice big ball and you have the death. Alright, uh, Aiden can take the, the last... PC slot for now, uh, until the until after the NPC goes. Oh, and I guess I have a, a floating boost with that last advantage. Alright, he'll t Aiden will take that. And he will fire at the closer group, I guess. Not the one that's engaged with anybody, but the uh, this one up here. Okay. Just defense one. And they're medium. And he will double aim. Alright, and this should do that. Okay. So, that is... 8 damage, pierce 2. 8 pierce 2, okay. And... If that doesn't kill it, he can crit too. Uh, which one was he hitting, by the way? The top group. Top group? So 8 pierce 2 would have done... It would not have been enough to kill him, so the crit would, though. Yep, okay. Right in the eye. Crit. All <laughs> right. That group is dispatched as well. Which means, I think... No, there's still two groups alive. Yep, you got this group. You have a, an NPC turn now, and it's the, the singleton down below.
I actually forgot to use that boost, too, so I'll just not take the two strain for the other aim. <laughs> okay, so it's, yeah, so it's just this guy, these lone guys. I guess seeing, seeing Rio run behind them to, uh, or this last guy, seeing Rio run behind them to just completely suicide, almost suicide bomb. Surprisingly not suicide bomb kill three of those guys. I'll turn back and try to uh, assail poor Rio. I have one defense. <laughs> Thinking to, him, thinking to himself, wow, that Jawa just earned a lot of Jag and F that I now want to take from him. <laughs> All right. So what would you say for your defense? I've got one. I have armored clothing, I do believe. Okay. Uh, we'll flip yeah. dark side. Why not? He's just one guy, so he doesn't have any I'll, ranks. I'll flip it harder. Make it harder. Oh, wait. For him. Does one minion have one rank, technically? Uh, I... No. You okay. get ranked for everybody after the first, so he yeah. just has... Yeah, that's what I thought. I was just making sure. Yep. So yeah, I'll, I'll upgrade he is, call. He is rankless. All right, and you flipped, so another red. Okay. Now, he was close enough. He'll, no, no, he'll, he'll move. Okay, that's fine. Oh, my God, he's shit. <laughs> he's just going to miss. Uh, <laughs> Rio's a little too short. He's a little, a little too small. He's, he's used to fighting bigger game. So the machete sails right over Rio's head in a... Uh, Chops off the little cone part of his hood. <laughs> no, that was Rio's favorite part of his hood. It was actually. <laughs> Does that mean you could theoretically see it and actually see what the back of a Jawa's head looks like? Uh, you got some light in there, yeah. <laughs> He's covered in sand. But uh, oh, they actually do have. Yeah, I don't know what they can actually do with this. Um. They'll take a free maneuver to uh, just aim again, trying to line it up better. So he kind of swings, misses, stops, and tries to line it up again. So he's using the machete, right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, and I think he was the last of the uh, of the round, right? Besides from you guys. Yeah, we've got Macron and Nana to finish the round. All right. I uh, I Macron was mainly going to give a stim pack to Mav, and the rest of the stim packs he got to Rensi to distribute among her men. I said, I'll let that just consume my turn if you don't want to add maneuver economy to it. No, that's fine. That works. All right, that's what I'll do. All right. Uh, oh, just I guess Gristle is with the main group as well. Uh, he's we actually he's still with you guys. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's like, he moved towards the uh, the main bit of fighting. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. He he he's coming in behind Renzi and Mav. All right, good. Just one. Sounds good. And then Nana to to round out the round. I'm sorry, you guys waiting on me? Yeah. Yep, yep, you're up to finish the first um, round. Okay, I'd like to do um, inspiring rhetoric for Mav and Renzi for their strain. Yeah. Um, oh. And can I get Jokin too? For yeah, you, does, does that matter how many, I think that matters how many successes you roll, right? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Field Commander is the one that's based on your presence. Yeah, you can reach everyone over there with your range, so. As long as you roll it. So you can get two people with that. Yeah, I guess just <laughs> Renzi and Mav then. Okay. So I'll just say two each. That's when you're just distributing it evenly. Sure. All right. Uh, take us back to the top of the PC. Did I don't want to go to first and kind of try to neutralize those guys in front? Someone please shoot the guy attacking Rio. Yeah, um, Erdo can go first. He'll go engage the guy with Rio to see if he can protect Rio. Um, what's the distance there? 
uh, back to guy, that guy, it'll be medium again. So you couldn't you couldn't get engaged from where you're at. Not much you can take an extra. He comes with a four sleep. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I always forget about the whole Jedi thing. Actually, even if it is medium, you can you can engage with two maneuvers. Not bad. So what's the damage there? Nitrous 4? Okay. That will be... Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, I think I was trying to talk into the other mic, which still isn't working. Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, leap behind the guy, grab his shoulders, whip him around, and just punch him right in the, the chest to get his attention. Fist of Furry? I don't know. No, I'm sorry. That brings him to his threshold. So he's actually still... <laughs> it happens. Alright. Um, NPC, call that your large group is staggered. Yep. They're staggered, but they won't move. They're staying where they are. Okay. Is that what you're going to use for this current NPC turn? Uh, he's still standing, technically. Yeah, he'll go for Rio again, just so he can actually end up using that aim he used. He'll just make his second... Well, since he was attacked, attack. doesn't that interrupt that? Uh, yep. He dealt damage beyond his scope, so he loses that aim. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's true. I'll, I'll upgrade his check again. <laughs> Alright. He'll just use his, uh, his regular maneuver to aim, then. Sounds so good. Good, get... good memory there, Dan. I was thinking about it at the end of the turn, and then completely forgot in the ensuing chaos. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, my God. He's not very good. Yes. These you guys are... <laughs> they're definitely not the A-team. That's what you've noticed. I like the, the JV. These guys aren't cool enough to be the, the cool cloak sniper guys. Gotcha. Um, well, they need to earn their cloaks. They haven't done that yet, I guess. Nana want to give a go with her, her new blaster on these guys down here? Uh, don't forget they're engaged with, like, everybody. So. Yeah, just, just some rebel nobodies. They'll make it or not. Yeah, they're not tardy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and shoot that guy. Um. So it gets an automatic upgrade because he's engaged. Yep, it's okay. only short. So it'll just be one red, one black. Those guys are in short? Yep. Okay. So she's going to um, use her electronic sighting system to aim as an incidental. Do you want to spend your other maneuver to aim? Yes. Okay. And uh, then she's going to shoot. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, 11 damage and a crit and um, a boost to whoever attacks them next. All right, let's see, 11. That brings one guy to his threshold, and then the crit kills the other one. So basically the only guys they have left are two that are uh, basically a tap away from dying. It sounds like we need to do a coercion check for surrender. Mm, good luck. I'm not sure if they're going to be... Yeah, I'm not, I don't know if he, they would, but it's worth a shot. They're morally opposed to surrendering. That's right. If they get caught, they lose all their points. Better the dying combat. Uh, does that gun have uh, accurate on it? By the way. Hey, stop. She has accurate one. She gets to aim as an incidental, and she aimed. Nice. Uh, Jack, do you want to 
stabby stabby here so I don't have to accidentally shoot a friendly. Yeah, that's what I was. I was just didn't want. Uh, I wanted everyone to have their shot to maybe clear the field a bit before I went to the melee. I would I would say it's fairly clear. All right, uh, then. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Macron will. They're short from where he is, right? The group right, right up here. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll take a maneuver in. Uh, yeah, he was passing out stim packs, so he wouldn't have had that equipped. Uh, not in that order. He will take out his uh, force pike there and then move in, and he'll attack. You sure he doesn't want to move in and then panically pull it out of his bag <laughs> or whatever, or off his holster? Uh, maybe he can do it while he's moving, narratively. Oh, shoot, I forgot to pull my weapon out. Uh... It's like, halt, time out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, these guys have anything that would change the difficulty beyond the standard two purple? Uh, they have one setback, one defense. Yep, one defense. All right. Uh, that does. I mean, they could crit and just take him out regardless. That too, but I want—I just want to make sure. Uh, uh, sorry. Go ahead. It's eight damage. Yeah, I mean. As long as you pass the soak, actually, yeah, eight damage just passed the soak and does one wound and killed him. <laughs> you want some? All right. Well, um, who's next? Is there someone gonna try and shoot the guy engaged with Rio and Erdogan? I mean, you could try to deal yeah. with him, or I can deal with him. Well, I mean, yeah. Rio would disengage and try and shoot with his lancer. Actually, real quick, you guys get a uh, message over the comms. Dale and Oberos and Heisinger have taken Shoren down. We're being attacked. All right, well, we're almost done here. Jokin, Jokin will reply that we're almost done here. Uh, and can they send us, like, their coordinates or something so we can go meet up? Maybe we can take the ship over for a strafing run. All right, I sent your message. Yeah, real, real uh... I guess we'll go. He'll he'll back up, disengage, and then he'll he'll take a shot with his lancer. Accurate one, pierce two, and it and should be one, just one red, right? Since Erdogan's still. And one black, yeah. And yep. one black, yep. All right. So here goes nothing. Hey, that's not enough to get through. Uh, so good. That's that's six, seven. Oh, it's pierce two. So. Is it pierce two? Then, then yeah, that's just two. barely enough. You got him. <laughs> that's all. That's all that matters. Pierce two. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You've cleaned up this uh, this very rowdy horde of Trandoshans that have now all collapsed to the to the underbrush, and it grows much quieter now. Rinsey, try and get your soldiers to the Sun Flare. Here's the location. We need to go help uh, everybody else. Yeah, could Pippa get uh, land, or at least? Get it and that close enough that we can load into the sunflare from here. It, um, much quicker than us running to them, you know. There isn't a good clearing yet, and you start getting what sounds like a what what seems like a transmission back from the other team, but it gets cut out. Some kind of interference is you know, interrupting it. Uh, uh, Rio wants to try and break through the jam. <laughs> he doesn't really have the. He doesn't have fi Fi's fancy equipment for it, but he'd like to try. I'm also going to steal one of their vibro uh, machetes. This is a I'm asking for difficulty. All right. Mechanically, it's the vibro sword, so... No, I got you. I'm, I'm stealing one. Hey, oh my goodness. You just poured out all of that on the... That's right next to the power cord, you little butt. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it looks like when Rio tries to break through whatever it is, it seems like it's not that you're being jammed, it's that something's jamming them. So I'm something on their end is causing the interference. Okay. So they have to do Okay, well then, I'd also... What guns are they using? I'll, I'll, I'm going to steal one of those, too. Uh, they just have regular blaster rifles. Oh, well, you know what? I will I will take as many as I can carry for parts. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay. It. I'm assuming the weapon crafting stuff will come out later, and these parts will come in handy. Uh, Junkin would love to get some information out of Renzi and Mav about what is... Um, uh, what's been going on. Maybe we can ask as we head back to the Sun Flare. Oh, well, yeah. we need to head towards... Or towards them, wherever they are. Others, yeah. Yeah, actually, um, we'll take a break here real quick. If that's okay with you guys. That is exactly. No, it sounds good. Team progress a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, let, let's say um, in fact, I want to just pick up all of their gear if I can, if no one stops uh, me. 
I mean, you can pick up as much as you can carry, but it's a lot of encumbrance. No, I got you. Well, I, I, I assume I can, I can just drop it whenever we get where we're going and pick it back up. I'm not, you know, what I mean, I have the backpack for a reason, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fill up patch. as much as you can. Just... Not to mention, you are a Jawa. You have a natural affinity for junk. I do. Yes, I have. I even, if I were doing a scavenging roll, I could remove one. Uh... <laughs> In fact, you know, can I just scavenge them for general parts instead while we're kind of waiting? Because um, I, I have a routine. I get to move one step back, and it takes half the time. Oh, man. I don't even know what I'd give you for that, though. Like well, I, I would just it. say kind of weapon components for whenever the crafting yeah, of weapons so can... comes out. Sure. Yeah, like you have to do, like, if he, if he breaks down four rifles, it might reduce the cost of repairing four rifles in the future or something by some... Yeah. Give me an average mechanics, and depending on your successes, we'll give you a certain number of rifles right, worth of components. Good. Could I use my custom toolkit bonus for this? Um, sure. All right, cool. I'm not going to worry about any kind of assistance or anything. So, eh, it's not too bad. Okay, well, so you can get, what, like two, I guess? Two rifles worth? Okay, yeah. I'll just between all of them, between I'm the stuff sure that's broken and maintained well. I'll put it in the chat. Two blasters. Weapon. Uh. All right. Now, uh, officially break time. I'll be right back. Yes, I assume that I'll come in handy. Oh, actually, let me uh, pause the recording. And, and we're back on. So, uh. So two red, two purple computers check to try to break through the interference on your end. All right, let's see. Or and from oh, your end. I, I'd say we did it. Oh, wow. Okay, let me tell them what you got. All right, sounds good. That's excellent. It's like your second or third double triumph roll today. Rio is very lucky. He always seems to have this kind of stuff. It's a shame that didn't actually happen to Zeke with a couple of sessions he was in. I don't think he rolled well at all. <laughs> yeah, that happens. You know those days, though, where, like, like last week, everything was going choking, but he rolled at least one triple triumph. Yeah. Oh, was that with the, was that with the asteroid? Um, I don't remember what... Which how, did, how, how did his asteroid adventures go, anyway? Did oh, we, we very easily saved the asteroid um, and basically brought it back to the rebellion. So that's why Joe had, like, disappeared at the start of the week, because it only had a Class 15 hyperdrive, so... They jumped into the edge of the state, uh, the edge of the system, but it, I think we said it was like a six light hour jump. But with the class fifteen, yeah. it uh, took you know seventy hours. All right. Hours. Um, Rio starts working on the comms, and while there's nothing like um, elaborate going through, he soon detects uh, sort of an underlying code, and he picks he picks it up and translates it. Or translates it. It's pretty common code, you know, like Morse code. And uh, it basically says it's it's hack on the other end, and he's trying to get through it. So Rio and Hack start collaborating. Uh, Tommy says uh, you'll give Hack two upgrades on his check to try to break through, and if he succeeds, you guys got it. Since you succeeded, so we'll see how that turns out. But in the meantime, uh, you guys are left with this very very tired, worn down group of rebels. Everyone has some kind of wound on them. They're all covered in, like, broken gear. Some of them have weapons that are just out of ammo. Um, Gristle's, like, started to help, yeah, but he's not all there. It's pretty obvious. I mean, he's, he's happy that they found people, but still feels a little lost, it seems. He's just kind of almost on autopilot right now. All right, you have the five. All right, I guess you can just... I'll just heal the most wounded ones for five, I guess. Or five of the most wounded ones. I think yeah. I was muted that whole time. Did you... Did I say I don't anything? Think I, I don't think I've heard anything from you yet, so... Okay. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, Aiden's going to go over and ask Grant see what happened. Oh, so they, uh... Sorry. Healing them from even more because he has one rank. Um... All right, Hack did succeed. I'll let you know what that means in a second when Tommy tells me. <laughs> okay. 
for Renzi and Mav. Uh, Renzi is definitely glad to see you guys and is, is as happy as she can make herself be. I... Oh, Hack sent the coordinates to where they are. So you have those now. Um, so let's see here. Uh, someone attacked the base. Uh, Trend Oceans mostly. They stormed down dozens and dozens of those uh, smaller ones. Not exactly small, but they're not like the other ones anyway. Uh, well, she would know the Heralds, so they look like uh, we think they're lower-ranked her heralds, probably ones, you know, sent here for some kind of uh, trial initiation, right, I guess, trying to prove themselves. Test of their strength, maybe. It's probably the reason why they went after us. Uh, just the day ago, Shoran split off to try to draw the other ones in a different direction. So we've been fighting the small ones, but still, uh, they've been on our tail for over a day. Do you know what happened to Hank and Volvus? Yeah, we f we found them when we arrived. It wasn't pretty. Found. So she kind of puts her her hand on her head, and definitely her her eyes gleam. Fights back some tears here, and um, they uh, they were the only reasons we could escape the base. So who were they fighting? She the Trend Oceans? Gestures at the Trend Oceans. There were some other ones with them, but we never got to see, get a good look at them. Hmm. The way they were cut up. Could it be people from Shorn's homeworld, or people that simply know of Shorn's homeworld customs. Yes, but there has to be... Uh... From the way it sounds, I mean, I guess they might do it, but it sounds like Shorn is not in the picture at the moment. Like he had been... Rendered. But I thought I thought the way they were cut up was specifically reminiscent of Shorn's people's. <laughs> According to the recording, you found at the base, yeah. Well, yeah, also they... from what Erdo found out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, that was very specifically a thing his people did. Maybe not. Maybe not only his people did it, but. Sure. Exactly. Similar cultural practices are, are found within wide ranges of cultures. Sounds like maybe a lord check might be in order. I'm just coming out there. If you could hear what I said, my mic was nowhere near me there. Um, like just to confirm that trend oceans do or do not do this kind of thing. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, it sounds like a lord check to me. Because I mean, this is delving into their, you know, rich, their, you know, their religion, which is as old as them. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll call it a hard lord check. I'll upgrade it. Why not? Um. In this case, well, it depends on whether you're approaching it from like a psychological. Would they want to do this kind of thing, or a more of a cultural thing? Yeah, I thought we were going more like checking from their religious, not more their, you know. Um, as far as I can recall, um, Trandoshans don't really have a history of doing this particular ritual. But some probably wouldn't be beyond borrowing them from other cultures if they, you know, take a liking to their practices, even just as a way to insult someone. I guess Erdo would repeat that to everybody, but he still has no... He has very little confidence in his assessment that it might have been Trandoshans. It could have been... Uh, he, did, he just doesn't know. Not enough information at this point. Agreed. So shall we have this conversa the rest of this conversation on the way to those coordinates we were given? Uh, if you want to go there, sure. Um, 
I mean, it seems like that's where we should be going right yeah, now. Yeah, it'll be a bit of a hike. Uh, and before you guys head out, Rantu kind of st stops you, I guess. Just you guys. Um, look, my, my men, have been, we've been marching for, well, not exactly a march, but we've been moving for two days straight. Uh, I want to find Shore and, and get evacuated as soon as possible, but I don't know if they can make it any further. Go back to the same player if you can. There are supplies, reloads, there's the ship itself to protect you. It's the best place. Just be wary about the bodies we stored in there. Oh man, don't go into the fridge. All right. So you guys are basically. So are you guys planning on going back? Or are you just going to send these guys back to the ship? I <laughs> doesn't want to send them alone, but I guess if nothing else, he would offer to guide them back. Well, I mean, would uh, these coordinates? Would going to these coordinates put us walking past the ship? Would you say? Uh, no. Okay. If it did, we can probably just get in and go over and strafe the guys, but... I mean, you could yeah. try them if you want. In fact, you know what? Yeah, if, if you don't go for that plan, Macron will take will lead the Ripples back to the Sunflare, and then hopefully meet up with you later. In the meanwhile, he'll introduce himself to Mav, <laughs> since there's an awkward relationship there. Uh, hello? Probably not... The, uh, not the best setting for a first meeting. Well, in the most awkward of times, we've already met before. I am, uh, am well acquainted with the report when you crash landed on, uh, Syngram 3. Oh. Right. R report? Yes, the uh, rebels. I have access to their records. Someone decided to file something about what happened there. Hmm. I know about what you did and what you chose not to do, and I find that quite admirable. Well, I, I'm glad someone appreciates a little bit of honor. Yes. I find that in short supply these days, but I... Welcome it when I see it. I guess it uh, depends on your definition. He kind of gestures at the trend oceans. Uh, some people call that honorable. I don't know if you do, but... Well, theirs is a fool's honor built upon primitive ideas of hunting and little respect for others who have claimed sentience. Not to mention their whole religion is based around a game. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit cruel, I think. Actually, let's see. So your plan right now is to take, some of you at least, take the rebels back to your ship, and then those people want to take the Sun Flare to the coordinates, and the rest of you want to go directly? Rio will walk. He'll, stay, he'll, he'll walk there. His explosives are more useful on the ground. Berto would want to get there as fast as possible, but I don't know what the fastest way to do that is. Yeah, well, would you think it would be faster to take the ship? Like, to get to the ship and take it, or just get there, or just walk there? Hmm. Would we know? Getting to the ship and going there would be safer. Going on foot could be faster if you can make good time and might put you in a better position when you get there. You don't, you're not sure. Just taking the ship in, they'll see you coming. And these guys do have ships somewhere. We may not want to attract any more any extra attention to the sun flare. We don't want to scuff its paint job, you know. Joe can get mad at us. But what if they use those ships to strafe our friends? Oh, true, true. We've already seen. I mean, you've most of you have already seen how the sun flare can offer air support when there are other ships in the area. As long as there are no uh, boarding Mandalorians. Well, yeah, and Jogan will be here to fly this time, so... Oh, yeah, hopefully they don't have breaching charges. Yeah. Also, um, 
among the the rebels, like what what gear they still have left, they actually have a uh, heavy repeating blaster on a on a tripod that can be set up. Or it could seems be set like perhaps the landing ramp of the sun flare. Well, that or we could. It maybe just Jokin and Macarin go back to the Sun Flare while the rest of you take this blaster and go on foot. And then when you, if you find a good place, you could set it up and give some flanking fire while we come in with the Sun Flare. Also, well, Renzi is right that the troops are all exhausted. They could be, you know, inspired to continue to help. And they'll be able to do more on the ship than. Uh... Uh, I think they, just, they need a rest, basically, is what it is. They, they we don't need, want to uh, continue to tax them. They yeah. don't need one. They're the Renzi's Pathfinders. They're pretty tough. Joken would up. be happy to attempt a leadership check. Yeah, well, and how... Anna can help with that. She'd definitely want to rally the troops a little. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If we're rallying them to go with us on foot and help fight, Macron is against it. But he would be for getting them as, like, gunnery crew on the Sun Flare. Or even in the very least, if we can get them to the sun play, they can catch their breath for a minute while we fly, and they could either act as gunner crew or we could... Or they could know, be more useful there. Insert them into a fight wherever they might be needed, you know? We could give them the option. Soldiers don't like options, generally. <laughs> or at least officers don't like soldiers with options. <laughs> Plus, they may be willing to tough it out even though they are currently aware of their condition. Yeah, like they might try to tough it out and overextend themselves, basically. Well, that's the life of Renzi's Pathfinders, I think. I'm all for bringing them back to the Sun Flare, and, or we could, could we split some of them, the, the more hale and hardy ones to go with the gang on foot, and some of the more fatigued to come back to the ship briefly? Yeah, you can split them up however you want. What do people think of that idea? I mean, we can get an assessment from Renzi of which ones are ready to make the make the hike. Yeah, any. that's. Er, uh, er, Kale just posted a really good idea. Um, try to grab a gunner and like a guide, basically for the foot crew. So it sounds like we need a leadership check. So Jokin would like to present. The, uh, the plan where some of them, volunteers will say, can go with the foot team and everyone else can go back to the sun flare and we'll kind of hit them from two angles, I guess, would be the approach or the description of the approach. Okay. Uh, Macron has either the f four presence or four ranks in leadership to offer. Yeah, I think Nena has five presents. Yeah, she does. Yeah, so we'll go with... And Jokin has three ranks and two boosts. Plus, I don't know about contribute. Would a contribution apply at all? Um, not here. Okay. Right, so um, they're not impressed. <laughs> it's more that... Also, they, spec ops versus spec force. They already have their CO right. here. So. Right. That's fine. Um, but, uh... Yeah, we'll call it hard leadership. We will get a boost because you guys passed out some stim packs, so they're all feeling a little better. Another boost for Gristle's healing. Oh, I think that's what that kind of was. Yeah, that too. That oh, was okay. just for helping them in general, basically, oh, okay. with the healing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, no, 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 no. Just trying to squeeze out a little extra, you know. <laughs> all right, I'm just checking. I don't have anything else to help, and I don't think that I do. I don't. So. Aha! All right. Yeah, you guys can basically split them off however you want. Um, most of them are good, like, we're ready to go, you know, they're ready, we're ready to end this. Let's just secure the area and wait for the evac. As you guys said, you had, like, well, you hadn't said it maybe, but you guys have Maydeen, or you have a call in to Maydeen to get an evac out. Could we, for the Triumph, say that we do have a gunner and a a guide volunteer to go with the foot group? Yeah, sure. Cool. So we'll say, I don't know. I think uh, Aiden will probably want to go with the um, the ship as well. I want to say that Devronian is the wilderness 
to decide what's for free. I want to pick favorite tokens. Okay. And then the top guy there, I can't even yeah. see what he is from this. He's a Kalish. That guy? I don't know if Kalish are prone to, be, prone to being rebels, but I really like that token, so I just used it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, those two can be, since they're the two unique ones anyway, they can be the two guys on the on foot. <laughs> Okay, so we'll say as far as skills go, one of them has three ranks in survival, the other has three ranks in gunnery. Is that good? Sounds good. That sounds reasonable. Right, so then they'll carry the, the repeater with, with them, or the gunner guy will. And then we're going to lead everyone else to Sunflare, I guess. Sounds good. Okay. And which and of you guys like, are going on foot? Also, Renzi uh, is going to stay with her soldiers as long as they're on the ground, so she's going with those two guys. Okay. And then it sounded like Macarin, Jokin, and Aiden, the, all the N people, except Erdogan, are going back to the Sunflare. Yeah, that's... Okay. Any particular reason why Aiden's returning? Just out of curiosity. I mean, he is a pilot, and he can co-pilot or whatever the case may be, if he needs to, or just man the guns. He doesn't have like gunnery skill, but he has you know five agility. So you, you should acquire a little bit of that. I, actually, I think I might have I might have one rank of gunnery, but yeah. Uh, uh, I have three cunning. Yeah. yeah. I'll probably put some more into gunnery once my piloting is at five. It's at four right now, so it's close. Okay. I'm not sure if they're quite ready yet. Let me just make sure. Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. Did anyone learn the Blood Eagle call? Maybe we could call back that one. We helped out. <laughs> that sounds like a survival check. <laughs> well, Maybe. Magda might be able to fake it. Once we get back to the sun flare, man, we can turn on the PA system. <laughs> Make a, yep. a squadron of blood eagles on us. If form all, up. If only we had a, a Pathfinder Jedi that could have meld it with him, huh? Uh, that would have right. been a very powerful Pathfinder. Form force, says, force rating of six. How says we can head over, but we'll have to I watch for one fun. round. You guys will show up at the end of the round they're in now. Okay. Um, so head over to that thread, though. Unless um, there's anything else you guys want to do first. That sounds like distributing weapons or taking care of what you guys want to do, things like that. Are all those rebel guys going to stay that injured, or did the stim packs do something? They've already been healed. The most wounded ones were healed. Okay. Yeah, you should have seen before. Yeah, yeah was, they were all pretty bad. Attention to their things before, so. Yeah. Okay. Remember, Jokin still has his, his missiles that he is not used yet. It's true. Oh, maybe we should pass those off then to the gunner guy or to someone who can Aiden. use them upon arrival. <laughs> or, Aiden, or Aiden could take over the piloting while Jokin like hangs out the loading ramp and fires one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I didn't even love them on the off chance we need to okay, land and do cool. something. Real that was like four people talking at once. <laughs> also, as far as terrain goes, you're not sure how it's going to be, if you're even going to have a landing spot or have any visibility from above. So, it's unsure... Well, what about, yeah, that I don't like the possibility that we may not even be able to land. Strafing runs can be very helpful, though. And we can oh, always concuss the cover and drop people off, too. With what? Rope? Missile landing field as well. In theory. There's trees. You, you can fast tree. rope down, I'd say. <laughs> It'd be rather dangerous, but hey. It's yeah, probably something these Pathfinders do a lot. They could uh, set it up for you. Okay. I think we're set, yes? No? Yeah, unless yes, there's anything else. Then we can head back to the other one, and we'll just be observing for the next round of combat they're doing, and then you guys will come in and see them. Someone right, take note of good. our destiny. Yep. So I, guess I got three dark white light for white, white light. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, this ends this uh, part of the recording, so I'll uh, see you back on the main one, guys.